The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Does anybody here have any traditions in your families? Christmas traditions or Thanksgiving or birthday or, you know, it's fall, so the first football game, maybe you have a tradition for that, whatever it might be. There's a story that I learned a long time ago. It's a little girl, she was, I don't know, eight or ten years old, and for the first time, she was going to be helping her mother cook the Christmas ham. And so they got the pans out and all the stuff, and, and then mom gets the ham and then whoosh, cuts the end off the ham and puts it into the roaster and puts it in the oven. And the little girl goes, Mom, why did you cut the end of the ham off? And mom goes, oh, I learned that from my mother when I was a little girl. To get a good Christmas ham, you got to cut the end off and put it in. Oh, okay. Yeah, your grandma taught that to me. So later in the morning, grandma shows up. So the little girl goes to Grandma, Grandma, I got to cook, help cook the Christmas ham today. And right before Mom put it in the pan, she, whoosh, she cut the end off. She said, you taught her that. Oh, yes, my mother taught me that, to cook a good Christmas ham. You cut the end off, put it in a pan, put it in a roaster. Your great-grandmother taught me that. <gasps> really? Yes. So we're going to go later to see great-grandma. So they all took the ham and the dinner and the goodies all to the nursing home to have dinner with grandma because they were going to have special Christmas dinner or great-grandma. Little girl comes up to great-grandma. Great-grandma, guess what? What? I got to cook the Christmas ham today. Really? Yes. And right before mom put it in the pan, she cut the end off. And she said she learned it from her mom who learned it from you. Why did you cut the end of the ham off? And she says, well, we had this little bitty pan, so we had to cut the end of the ham off to get it to fit. Sometimes that's how traditions start. And these traditions sometimes become, in a way, law for us, doesn't it? We have to do it. This is tied into the other part. There's many themes from these readings this weekend. But the other one is this defilement, right? It's not from what outside defiles you, but what comes out that defiles you. Thank God of that, because then fried chicken and pork chops aren't defiling me. They may not be good for me, but they're not defiling me. But the reality is, is that true? 
the things we think of, the things we do, the things we say, they are the things that defile us. And sometimes our traditions intermixed with who we are and they cause us to make decisions to defile ourselves. Now, I'm going to go to Medlin for just a second. I'm not leaving preaching to Medlin. Some people have, and I've heard them tell me this. It's not me. Oh, I have the TV going all day just for the noise. And maybe they have it on the news. And so the news is coming. And this stuff just keeps pouring in. And if you're listening to the news today, what are you listening to? A bunch of junk, right? All the challenges in the world. And it's coming in. And if it's a tradition to leave the TV on all day, I'm not saying stop that. But if that's a tradition and it's dumping that stuff in your brain and then you have trouble in your heart and you can't feel peace, and then out of your mouth comes things about people or about the other political party or about particular individuals who are involved in government or in the world or whatever, and you start, and that's what's defiling you because it's coming out of you. Maybe that tradition of having the noise on needs to quit. Or maybe it needs to be uplifting music. Or maybe it needs to be scripture study. Or something that can actually benefit you. Because that's the reality of how we're supposed to live our lives intentionally. Intentionally. The first read, or the second reading actually. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. And then the next part, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Part of what we're supposed to look at in our lives all the time is to be intentional about how we live our lives. We're here at Mass, right? We're here at the most beautiful sacrament that we can share today, the Eucharist. We come together, some are guests, some belong here, some are family visiting from other places, and we come together, and you can go to any Catholic church in the world and experience this beautiful understanding of, of hearing Scripture, of praying, of singing, and ultimately of receiving His body and blood, this gift that He gives us to go out into the world and to share our lives. If we're just showing up to check the box so we don't go to hell, maybe we need to look at that. Because then maybe we're just hearers of the Word and not doers. We have to be doers of the Word. We had a guest at our first Mass. Not a Catholic. Was invited by another parishioner. I know him quite well. He's become a friend of mine since I've moved here to Bartlesville. It was his first time to Mass here in St. John's. It was the first time the Catholic Mass in a long time. And I've talked about him just a little bit because what I know about him is in the mornings when he gets up and goes and walks, he prays for you and I because he walks by our church. And he prays for Father John and for Father Carvajal. And he prays for the people that come to Mass here, whether they're parishioners or whether they're guests. And then he goes down the street and he plays for the policemen and the firemen. And then he gets down to another church and he prays for them. And then he prays for the people in the courthouse. He's being intentional about his life. He's taking a walk. He's getting good exercise. He's doing the things he's supposed to do for himself. But he's also a doer of the Word. How are you at being a doer of the Word? How am I at being a doer of the Word? That's part of living an intentional life. Jesus is shaking his head at these Pharisees and these Sadducees because they say lots of things, but they don't do anything. They don't care for those around them. What did it say about good religion? Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this to care for the orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. It's a fight to keep yourself unstained by the world right now because the evil one is attacking us from all sides. Everywhere, everywhere we go, the junk is coming at us. So we must keep our guard up in a way. 
We must do the things inside of us, make the decisions inside of us that helps us to live our lives the way God has created us to. That's why we come to Mass. That's why we are Catholics. That's why we are Christians. That's why in, in God's infinite love for us, he gave us his son. He gave us the church. He gave us the sacraments so we could be doers of the word, not just hearers. The question today, as it is every day, is how am I doing the word? I mentioned it before Mass, you know. Have you prayed this weekend? It's, it's a Labor Day weekend, right? And what is it to most people? To get an extra day off. The banks are closed, the post office is closed unless they're delivering Amazon packages, right? Schools are out, everybody gets a day off. What's, what do we celebrate this weekend? Labor Day. The beauty of work, the reality of doing something to help our families. Have you yet this weekend prayed and given thanks to God for the labor that has been in your life, whatever it is, the jobs you had, the businesses you've owned, the ability to live, for many of you here, I know, a retired life and still be able to pay the bills. This is when we're supposed to give thanks. And then also, hmm, can we pray for the people in Bartlesville that need a job? The people in Oklahoma that are looking for jobs. Those people that it's difficult to find jobs because maybe they have a prison sentence in their background or they've got something that has kept them from being able to work. They want to work. They'd love to work, but they can't work. Maybe people with mental health issues that is challenging for them to keep a job. Have we prayed for them? That's part of being intentional about our Catholic faith. Being intentional about being a Christian is when these things come up. Do we have the time? Do we take the thought process to do these things? Or do we just do our traditions? It's the same thing every year. It's the same thing every day. Jesus in the gospel is trying to get these fat Sadducees and Pharisees to understand the importance of living an intentional life. May we, 2,000 years later, hear his voice and respond. The question will always be, how am I at being a doer of the word? Let's ponder it today. Let's give thanks that we're in a country where we're free to join together and honor God. And let's reflect on what God might be calling us to in this moment. What He might be asking us in our Christianity, in our being brothers and sisters in Christ, in living the Word, doing the Word that He has so freely given us.